and hello everyone welcome back to your Lua tutorial. Today we'll be looking at coroutines. If you're not sure what I'm talking about in this introduction section, you don't have to worry about it, you can still follow along without a problem. Anyhow, so a coroutine is almost like an async await function, where you basically have a function that can execute. And it can actually stop mid-process to let a different function complete before it continues. A coroutine instead can wait before finishing and then let a different function run. And let's say that's also a coroutine that that can wait before finishing and let a different function run until that has finished. And you can like finish them afterwards. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but it will be a lot easier if I just show you what we're doing. So I'm going to create a global, or let's just create a local function. This can be a routine called one. And this will be equal to coroutine dot create. And this will create a coroutine. And as you can see here, it says it takes in a function. So basically in here, you have two things you can do. You can either create your own anonymous function and put it in here, or you can create a function, put it in a variable, and then stick it in here. We'll do both just to show you the differences. Anyhow, so then we can say function. And in this function, we can just create a basic for loop. And let's say this for loop will return the values one up until 10, and it will print out the value. So it's just a basic for loop. There's nothing special about it. Now here is where the special part comes in. So if we say if i is equal, and let's say five, so right in the middle, then, then we want to actually stop the coroutine from finishing. We want it to wait. We can then say coroutine dot wait, <laughs> dot wait. No, that should be coroutine dot yield. And this will yield the coroutine. It will make it wait before continuing. And you'll actually see what it does in a second. Let's just actually code it first so we know what's going on. Next up, we can create another routine. And this can be called routine2. And here, I'm just going to create a function just to show you the two different ways you can do it. You can create a normal function, but I'm just going to store the function inside of a variable just because why not. And we can call this routine func. So for routine function. And that can be equal to a function. Whoops. And here we can say four. And then we can say i is equal to, and let's say we wanted to continue counting. So we can make that 11 all the way until 20. And here we can say print. And this is routine two. So I'm just going to say routine two. And then we can just say here, I. And we can actually make that routine one just so we can easily see the difference between them. So instead of just that, we can say that. And we can just make that routine one. Now routine two, we can make that equal to coroutine. Oops, coroutine. And dot create. And since it takes in a function, we can just say routine func. And there we go. That should be all we need. Now down here, we can actually get the status of our routine. So before we actually execute a routine, let's get the status of it. So print coroutine dot status. And here we can like say, let's say we want routine status of one. And here it actually gives you a nice what status is in VS Code. So here we can see we have running, and this is just if the program is currently running. Is that coroutine running? Is it busy working? Then you'll get this. Suspended is if the pro or is if suspended is if the coroutine is not running. So if it's kind of stopped or it just hasn't started yet, then you'll get suspended. Normal is if it's active but not actually running. And date is basically if it has completed or stopped with an error. So you can actually go to the documents here. So you can just view documents. I'm not going to be doing that, but you can if you want to know more about this. If we save this and we just Lua our main file here. And then as you can see, we actually 
we actually got it to run we should probably just do that and then we can do this my bad and yeah as you can see we get that just don't add the uh, curly breaker brackets here at the end it should be without it so yeah then we get suspended because this hasn't even started yet but what we can do is we can say coroutine dot resume and this will start or resume a coroutine so it can do both and here we can just pass in the routine so i'm going to say routine one and let's see what we get we get routine one and it only goes up to five even though we said it should go up to ten whoops uh, we can bend this we don't. okay so even though we said it should go up to ten we get five because we yielded it it's actually waiting for another one to execute but it still says suspended here that's because it's not running if it's not running then it's suspended but what we can do is we can then go like this and we can copy this so what we're saying is take this first coroutine and start it and then we're printing out the status of it after it has gone up until i equal five then we're saying okay resume it continue with it even though we said yield and they were printing out the status so let's see and now it gets suspended and it continues and then we get dead because it has completed it doesn't need to continue anymore so this is one example of how you can do it if you want to actually see an action as running then what you can do is we can take this print right here and i'm going to put it right here right underneath this it can't actually access itself so the way we can get this to access itself is to just make this global now if we were to run this as you can see we get the running status after each one until it says dead so that's how you can just check if it's running so i'm just going to go back to our previous example here again here we go now the reason why coroutines can actually be quite useful is let's say we we take this and we just create a copy of that line and we make that two now look what happens i'm just going to remove this that status right there so look what happens if we just clear that and run it we get routine one up until five and then we get routine two actually going to until 20 and then routine one is continuing this is why it's useful because you can actually stop the routine in its tracks and let another routine run you can think of it as a loading bar let's say you're installing a game and you're seeing that loading bar right there and let's say routine one is the main routine and you can make that yield until and let's say it extracts the file and that can be routine two once it has extracted the file your loading bar would go a little bit up and then let's say now it has to put that extracted data into its folder location i know this is sound like gibberish but we can actually take a good look at this by if we were to open up my file manager here and just copy a large file so i'm just going to copy a big anime file and a big one should probably be probably be, be a demon slayer we can then create a new document or go into documents i just paste it here and it, we should actually see a little and here we go you can imagine this is a coroutine for each file it has copied or for each megabyte it has copied the coroutine gets yielded and this moves up you can imagine it like that so yeah that is one way to imagine it it may be a little confusing but if you actually work with it it does become less confusing anyhow before we finish it off one thing we can do is also check if a coroutine is currently in a specific state for example let's say we don't actually know if coroutine one has completed what we can do is we can go here and say if coroutine dot status and we just put in the status of this routine or we don't put in say we just put in the routine so routine one if that is equal to and it actually completes it here for me i'm going to say suspended then so only if it is suspended should we try to resume that coroutine like that let's see what happens and there we go that is all for today it's just about coroutines and how you can use them 
to basically stop a function in its tracks and then run a different function whilst that first function is still waiting. And once the first function has completed waiting, you can make it run again. And you can check its statuses and use that to your advantage. And that is coroutines. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all understood and enjoyed this video. And I'll see you all again in the next Lua tutorial.